If you have over $200,000 sitting stagnant in your bank, retirement account, or home equity, then you're literally losing money. On this show, you learn how to get that money working for you consistently and conservatively. Learn to grow your nest egg with your host, Sean Winslow. Let's dive in. Welcome back to another Finance Friday episode. I'm your host, Sean Winslow, and this is the Multifamily Money Podcast. What's going on, everybody? You know the drill. And for those that are new, every Friday, we're talking all things personal finance. So we come at you solo shows, guests to share tricks and strategies to not only get your money working harder for you, but also smarter because we all know it's not what you make, but what you keep. And we want you to keep as much as you can so you can create the life of your dream and make this world a better place. Because I feel the ultimate way to to make the world a better place is through personal excellence. And that's focusing on yourself and being the best person you can be. So thereby we can help others and lift them up to our level and we can all be the best. And consequently, we'll just lead to a better place. So today I want to talk about a strategy that I think can help you in your pursuit of your, your financial goals and dreams. And as you can tell in the title, that is business credit cards. And we've I've talked about using business credit and credit cards in the past. I had a guest on, um, check it out. It was, a, it was a great episode. It was episode eight. So early on, we had a guest who talked about the importance of, of business credit. And I won't get too much into it, but, but one of the main factors you want to know is that it's not business credit is not linked to your personal credit. It's its own entity. So your, your business has an EIN number, which is the business form of you know, your social security number of a person's social security numbers. That's what a business is called. It's an EIN. So your credit is linked to that EIN. So it's not linked to your social security. So if you have a business and, and say, you know, you, you start racking up bills, and you're not able to make payments and it hurts your business credit, but it won't hurt your personal credit. So that's one of the, the major things that there's that separation. So if anything was ever to happen to it, maybe a business you own, it's not like, yes, you're still tied to it. So you're going to, Oh, those losses, but it's not tied to your personal credit. Um, at least it shouldn't be. Obviously, there are circumstances where it, in bankruptcy things change, but um, but if you're just behind on payments and, and maybe and on personal credit, that would hurt you if if you were using your personal credit card. But on the business side, if you were behind on credit on on paying your credit card off, it's not going to then ding your your personal credit. So that's important that that separation there, right? That's that's what I want you to take away from it. There's obviously a lot of other um, important benefits to business credit, and definitely check out um, episode eight to to hear about all those. But I just want to f- focus on that aspect of it um, because we all know personal credit is very important. And I also had another episode where I talked about how to build um, your personal credit and the factors that these credit agencies look at. So check that out on episode twenty seven. Um, I, that's where I get in, into that, but the one I want you to to focus on for this show is your credit usage. So obviously one of the big, they obviously take, are you paying your bills on time? That's one of the main ones, right? So they want to see that, but there's also one called credit usage. And what that simply means is how much of the credit that you've been allotted are you using? So say between all your credit cards, you have $20,000 worth of credit that you can pull from at any given time. Well, they don't want you to they don't want to see you using more than 10% of that, you know, at any given time. So obviously it, it rolls on a monthly basis because that's when you pay your credit so, card. So let's just say you they don't want to see you have more than two thousand dollars, be using more than two thousand dollars of that twenty thousand dollars per month, right? Um and I don't know about you, I don't know where you, you all live, but I know that two thousand dollars a month doesn't get you that far, especially if if you're a, f- a family, maybe maybe a, a single person, you can you can get you can get by, but um, a family that's that's tough. Two thousand a month, and it's not to say you can't go over that. You certainly can, right? But they start to ding you um, a little bit once you go over that ten percent. And so there's a bunch of these factors. And obviously, I alluded to the one before, like if you miss miss payments, that's not good neither. If if you um, if you don't use your credit enough, there's also they want to see that you're using at least one percent. So there's all these factors. And again, check out episode 27 to really um, learn all the factors and what it entails and what you need to be doing to drive that personal credit up. Because 
why is this so important? Well, it's important for a lot of factors because a lot, a lot of um, businesses or opportunities you're trying to do, they will, they will actually look at your credit. And if it's poor credit, one, it might cost you more or two, you might not even be able to do the said thing you're, you're trying to do. For instance, um, they look at, obviously they look at credit when you're trying to get a mortgage on a house. So if you have poor credit, one, you might not even be able to qualify. And two, if you do, it's going to be at a higher rate and probably worse terms, um, which obviously hurts you in the long run. Um, you know, if insurance, like health insurance or insurance on a house, they actually look at your credit score. And so for instance, say you're getting insurance on your car. If they see you have, you know, bad credit history, which means you're, you're less likely to pay than someone with, with good credit history, they're going to charge you more of a premium for that risk that you may not pay or may not pay on time. Um, when you, if you want to rent an apartment unit, they look at your credit score. Landlords do that. So one, you may not, it may make it really hard for you to actually land an apartment if you have really bad credit. So there's all these different factors. Sometimes even um, employers will look at it and certain jobs and that, that could, you know, they could turn you away because of that. So there's all these things that poor credit will really hurt your financial future. Um, and so it's something you need to focus on. Well, what's a great way to, to not hurt your, your credit is, is for it not to be, to be dinged. Right. And so for one thing is not going above that usage. That's an important thing. Um, and so this is why the topic of conversation using a business credit card. And so for some of you that don't have businesses that might not apply, um, but you certainly could set up an entity that is essentially a business and has an EIN and a credit card. But this, so that is a possibility, but this is more for those that do have some type of business. And so what you do is you obviously, you would want, if this is an active business that you, that is obviously operating, you might already have a credit card. In that situation, we want two credit cards, a minimum of two credit cards, right? So we want one credit card that you're charging all your business expenses, operations, and then you're paying it off via your business checking account, right? The second one, it is a business card and would be under that entity's name with your name on it, obviously. And you'd be using it for personal expenses. So whatever, whatever food, travel, utilities, what, what, whatever it may be. But that's all you're using it for is personal stuff. You're not using it for any business operations or transactions. And then you're paying it from your personal checking account. That's important. It has to be paid from your personal checking account. And it's also important that there's no like mixing of personal and business charges on it. it these two credit cards are solely are used solely for two different purposes. One is for the business, one is for your personal. And you keep them separated. But the powerful thing about it is they're both connected to that EIN. So they're both connected to that business credit and not your personal credit. So if if you get in that, you know, an instance where your usage is super high, because I've seen this before where people make a big pur purchase, maybe they Maybe they put a, a roof, they just re replace the roof and they put it on a credit card or renovations in their house, they put it on their credit card, whatever it may be, big purchase. And they have the money to pay it off. They just haven't paid it off yet. And it's eating up their usage and their credit score drops drastically. How do I know? <laughs> I bought a roof on a credit card before. <laughs> That's how I know. And my credit drastically dropped. And, and so... And if you go then go to apply for some other type of um, loan or anything that needs to look at your credit, that could be a bad situation. Ask me how I know. I, bu <laughs> I, bu I bought a roof with a credit card and then I was apl applying for a refi. It, it didn't look good. And then I had, I obviously I was in the circumstance where I was fortunate enough to be able to, I had the cash I could pay it off. Um, but that's just stuff you learn, right? But if I had it on a if I had put it on a business credit card at that time, I wasn't early in my career, wasn't set up properly. 
And that's why I love coming on here and talking about this stuff because I don't want people to make the same mistakes I've made in the past. So I, I didn't have that set up. So that hurt me, right? It, it hurt the the refi. And luckily I got it all sorted out and then, you know, things went along and, and it all worked out. But if I had put it on a business credit card, my personal credit score would not have been affected. Um, and I wouldn't have had to pay it off as fast, you know, because what I was going to do is the refi was going to cash out because we were getting ready to close and that money just pay off the credit card, right? Um, and didn't have to dip into to personal money at a time, even though, you know, could have done it and then taken the, the refi out. But that, that's just how I wanted to do it. And, but because it was on my personal credit, I couldn't do it that way. So, you know, I had to shuffle some money around and, and pay it off, pay it off quickly. And, but to the point, if it was on the business credit card, that wouldn't happen. So that's why I feel it's important that you should be using a business credit card. Obviously, you still want to use some, some things are on your personal credit because right? you want to keep that credit strong. But for instance, if you have a mortgage, um, that's in your and you're paying it. That's going to help bu- build that credit. Um, if you've had other loans in the past, that helps build that credit for sure. But I think it's important to also have that business card you're using for personal expenses, so it it doesn't hurt your personal credit, um, because that is ultimately the, one of the most important things when it comes to finance is your credit score. And obviously, it always should be said when it comes to credit cards, you should only be buying something that you can actually pay with in cash. You should not be using this to buy something that you can't afford. And then you're racking up debt. That's the worst thing. If, if that's your situation, cut up the credit cards, get rid of them. Um, but I hope the people that are listening, that's not you. And if you, and if it is, is you, we need to fix that habit because that's not good. That can lead to a lot of a lot of bad things, right? That's not the path you want to be going down. That's not how we are going to achieve our financial goals. So I just like to preface anytime um, I talk about credit cards is they should only be used if you could actually pay for it in cash, right? And the reason we use credit is so we don't have to get rid of all of our cash out of the gate. And we can also build credit and get awesome things like cash back, rewards, points. That's all awesome, right? But it only should be used on things that you can afford that you would buy anyways, right? That you have the cash there. If you didn't have the credit card, you still could buy. So that's important. Wanted to get that out of the way. But yeah, business credit, super important. And this is not to say do this and let your business credit suffer. No, but the reason I say this is because business credit is judged differently than personal credit. It doesn't have the same factors that are taken in, into account. So that usage is not going to hurt you like it does on a personal card. So that's why you can, that's why I think you should use the business credit. Again, business credit is not to say it's the same thing. Only buy stuff that you can afford to pay. I'm just saying it's better to use it this way so it doesn't ding you on the, on the usage because that can really hurt you and that can that can happen quickly, right? You think, oh, I have 30K, 40K of credit. I do have the cash to pay for it, but I want the points. So I'm going to put it on my card, whatever, your your Delta card, your whatever, Amex card, so I can get the points. And you do it not thinking anything about it. And then you're applying for some, maybe a refi or something. And they say, whoa, your, your credit's not really like, see, and you're like, what are you talking about? I pay my bills all the time. Never had a late payment. What are, you, what are you talking about? So, oh, your usage is very high. What do you, what? And, and, and that can happen, right? But if it was on the business card, that wouldn't happen. So if you're in the position to do this, I would highly recommend taking advantage of it. That's, that's how I run most things. And it's helped, it's helped, it's served me well so far because when, when you're applying for certain things that need personal credit and you could have a usage, issue that, yeah, you're going to pay it off on time, but you just hadn't, it can hurt or it can slow things down. So I wanted to share this. Guys, I hope you got value out of this. As always, if you did, please share with someone, a friend, family, colleague that you think could also get value out of it. That's how we grow the show. Also, if you haven't left a rating review, please do so. Please do so. 
you can either leave that on um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or if you're watching this on YouTube, which we are on YouTube, you know, like and subscribe. That helps as well. So thank you all. As always, easy doesn't pay well and instant gratification is self-destructive. So not only get out there and work hard for your money, but have your money work hard for you so we can all build the lives of our dreams and make this world a better place. All right, catch you on the next one. Hey, this is Sean Winslow. After being in the financial service industry for years and having candid conversations with good people just like you, I realized that so many of us are wanting an investment strategy that provides solid returns and consistent income without the bumps in the road. There's little known secret that your financial advisor doesn't want you to know. There is an investment out there that is less volatile and the returns are stronger. Get more details by going to greenbriarcg.com and clicking on the free e-report. And by the way, if this show has provided you any value, then feel free to leave an honest written review and of course, share it with a friend who needs it. See you next week for another great show.